Hello guys, welcome back to another quick tip tutorial. I was asked to make a short quick tips about animation and how it works in the graph editor. So I just made a simple um, jumping sphere or you can see that it's a soccer ball. It's nothing special, just some animations um, in the translation and rotation. And I'll show you some tricks in the graph editor which may be helpful for you or speed up your workflow in animation or even let you see how it all this graphs and curves work. So first to start I want to show you the animation curves for my wall which are pretty easy to see. I only all the jumping is made from the translate translate Y where you can see five is at the top and then the ball drops, hits the ground, goes up again, drops again. So it's pretty simple. And and just for a bit more realism, I added a rotation animation where the ball just rotates subtle throughout the animation. And for a bit of detail, I added a squash deformer in Maya. And what it does is it squashes the ball on impact, extends it when it's going up, and repeats the process. And in the end it stops doing it, as you can see. It's maybe a bit too exaggerated, but it gives, when, it, when in motion, a better preview of what's happening with the ball. So, how did I do that? I just start up with a new sphere, place it around here, I just hide the existing ball and assign the same shader to it. It should be two, some stretching going on, you're not sure why. Okay. So I first start up by placing it at the top and then you go to transit y, right click and key select it or what you can do is press S the S key it keys everything in the channel editor which you not always want you could also press shift and W for W for translation and then it only keys the translation keys but if you know you just want it, want the transit y just right click on it and key select it and then a key is created in your graph editor there. So let's say at 10 frames later the ball is at the floor, which is 0, or not really, which is this value here, key selected. And now I have a linear curve fall off, as you can see. Now you could even, if you select that and press Shift and the middle mouse, you can move in the graph editor. And if you press shift and go right and left, it snaps to the horizontal movement or translation. So I want to make it go from higher. So now it's dropping, hitting, and from here it should go up again. So what you could do now is go to translate right click and key select it again. Then you get a, cur uh, a new key in the graph editor. What you also could do is, I quickly delete the key, you could select your curve, right click in the graph editor and insert key. It's It will do eventually the same thing but it's more convenient to work that way. Now you can with shift and middle mouse you can move it up how far you want. So now we have a process of dropping going up and now we need to go a bit further in the timeline, right click insert key and copy or remember this value 934 insert it here and enter now it's back at the bottom and then we go a bit further right click insert new key or you could just copy these two control copy or C and control V for pasting and now you get this two new cube 
keyframes and now you can just place them where you like to let's say here and nine three four and and to do that until you get a nice dropping curve now it, it still looks a bit choppy because you don't have a keyframe interpolation on top of you know these curve examples show you which or how the curve is interpolated this one here is a automatic one which thinks which is the best but in this case it's looking better but in real life the ball wouldn't slowly accelerate at the bottom it would go like linearly up and then go into a busy handle on top and go linear back down so automatic wouldn't work for the the whole whole um, key animation so you could check through all of these they are nothing too new I think if you would work in After Effects or something you also get to know that <coughs> this one is a stepped animation it just gives you the exact locations of your keyframes so you get it it's good for timing purposes so you can see if the speed is okay but afterwards you eventually have to interpolate the keyframe so you want a flat tangent on the top but you just want linear on these keys here so you just select these by holding the shift key you can select your bottom keyframes and then you can make different interpolation for each keyframe so I could make these linearly and now the curve goes slowly and increases in speed stops here and goes back in the other direction so it's looking more realistically now as you can see the timing is a bit off because it's still too slow so you select all your keyframes press shift middle mouse and you can move horizontally and then you can <coughs> see your timing again and you also could loop it or keep it playing the animation and if you see you want to increase the height you can just do that or lower it it updates it automatically in the animation so something like that now if you want to add a rotation for that you could just um, set a keyframe for your rotation or you can just press by selecting the wall shift and E E is for the rotation tool and then you can see on the right my keyframes are created and I want to rotate the ball until here and then I press shift E again to create a keyframe now until now nothing happened because they are on the same position the keyframes so if you go into X and move it up and into Y and just make some any random values you can think of and then you want to slowly decrease the speed of the rotation so you have to make them go straight at the, t at the end of the uh, linear curve so you want to have them flat tangents at the end so you can see the rotation starts and slows down slows down until it stops at the last keyframe so now the ball is rotating as you can see the motion ball is way too heavy now quickly just turn that off or reduce the amount in here you see it's a way too heavy the, the rotation so what I would do is just decrease these and put them go up no it's a way sub subtle animation and that's more or less what I did with my first ball I just tweaked them a little bit more in detail and if you want to also add a st uh, stretch and squash animations it's a really easy um, command in my I just have a sphere or whatever object you have you go into the animation menu and on the create deformers under the non-linear you have some deformers, you have a band, squash, whatever, twist I used the squash one and in the squash attributes you have a factor if you increase the factor value 
you can see the ball stretching and squashing and that you could animate, you can also animate the position of the object of the deformer object so it could go through, you can scale that, you can rotate that so you could create some interesting effects if you like that and whatever, you can do whatever you like, it's pretty easy and I hope you have now a better insight in how to create keyframes and how to work with them in the graph editor. It's pretty easy. S is for keyframing every parameter in a channel box and press S again to create the keyframe. You could now because I move everything, it's really a drastic animation. Ball moves and increases in size and rotates also a bit. But you can see, you can move them with the middle mouse. You can add your interpolation modes on top of here. You can select the handles by also selecting them, middle mouse, and moving them. You can also break the tangents with these. I think it's this one. And you can break tangents, which is not always nice because you get some choppy uh, animations at the end of the keyframe. And what else? Linear is you can also use select the handles and move them. It's always your option. Yeah. Um, and if you want to create a ball which goes till infinity or jumps till infinity, you could also do that by use default lighting, and you could just create a sphere. I just quickly do that. Freeze transformations. And going back to zero. This is some interesting effect if you want to create some animations which go till infinity. I'll give you just in a second a uh, example what I mean with that so you can see the balls going up and you want to repeat the same curve you could click on these buttons here they are infinity or they repeat the curve until infinity so you could copy them and as you can see it's repeated the process you can also increase that whatever you like it's working pretty easy and nice so if you want to create a jumping ball animation this one is let's say three and we put this one also on three uh, or what here on three and inside of here I also create a key and put that on zero and put this on linear uh, this one here on linear now we get a ball which is bouncing until infinity. It's nothing too special, but it's working. Now you have to slow it down a bit. And if you increase this to 500, let's say, it will jump and jump and jump. Okay, I hopefully could show you some nice tricks for animation and I hope you did learn something just a simple ball but I hope you get the idea what I wanted to show you about how the keyframes work and everything else thank you guys cheers